Welcome back and let's work magic. I'm going to continue the chipping with flicking base color paint to complement previous chipping. I recommend you using acrylic paints as you can chip them off easily if you don't like it with a toothbrush or even better, use enamel or oils. You will need to protect them with an additional layer of varnish if you choose to use those though. I'm using lacquer paint, it's kind of dangerous but I know what I'm doing. He said before having to quickly fix some mistakes. I will hand brush the photo edge on the small details that I had to add later. We need to think what's better when painting and building to make things easier for ourselves, whatever we can. I mentioned this technique on the previous video but did not show it in action. For areas around hatches, I like to use some masking tape, this is particularly useful to differentiate hatches and panels. I will refine and add some more with a brush and a sponge. Now a general filter. We need to mix it thoroughly. This needs to cover everything equally and not pull like a wash. As for the color, Ochre is generally a good choice for brown, green and yellowish camouflage. Now I started doing washes. I hate this wash to be honest but I bought it so I'll use it. Let it flow into detail. Once we finish and let it sit for a bit, we can clean up the excess with a moistened brush. We can also use a makeup sponge to clear big areas if we need to. Oil dots. I quite like this technique to enrich surfaces, among other things, without changing the colors drastically. I'm going to use ultramarine blue, medium green, raw sienna, naples yellow and magenta. I will use orange and red if I see it fit. Before we use oils, put the paint in a little cardboard and let the oils bleed out. I will do small dots with the oils. Do not apply too much paint and try to enrich the colors of the camouflage using color theory. Also, try to keep darker tones lower and light ones higher to give volume. Honestly, there's a lot to talk about oils, as you can do a lot of things, so we'll explore them more in future videos. To blend, use a lightly moistened brush and try not to smear or mix the colors. For the dust on the lower hole, I apply a chipping fluid layer and airbrush a layer of enamel dust effect paints. When it's drier, I apply the same paint as before with a brush highly diluted and make patches and accumulation in nooks and crannies. Once it's dry to the touch, I activate the chipping fluid with a brush moisture it in water. I work harder the flat panels as dust will fall off easily from there. To blend previous work, I airbrush a misty layer of light dust color all over it. We can create new accumulations or layers with this, and if you want you can repeat these steps as many times you want with as many colors you like. A 
I will make a mixture for dust and dirt on the wheels and apply it as a dust wash. I mix the pigments with enamel paint and enamel thinner. Apply it to the road wheels randomly, similar to a wash, and try to be random. Once dry, we blend the hard edges and refine. I do the same in the tracks, and to recover some of the shine on the contact areas, I rub metallic pigment. I also clear and polish the parts that touch the wheels leaving only a very light dust there. Now let us move to the upper hull. I will apply the dust effect starting with an airbrush base to work on top after. I will keep using this enamel dust effect but you can use acrylic or whatever else you want for this that matches the colors you need. I max the vertical surfaces as I want to represent the accumulation of dust first on flat surfaces. Up next come the pigments. I will apply them randomly on top of the previous airbrush work to achieve richness on the finish and different layers and densities of accumulated dust. I will fix it with some drops of enamel thinner. Try not to distort the pigments when applying the thinner and let capillary effect do the work. Then I will add some enamel dust effect. Also, some pigments are on the turret ring, and using two different colors of pigments to give more richness. Let's take this out of the way. And fixing them with enamel thinner. To blend the enamel dust effect, we use a brush moisture and enamel thinner and work on the outside to the inside trying not to move it all around but to fade the edges. Here's the whole dusting work so far. I would say for now it's pretty good, but needs some more refinement. The area around the turret ring needs more work. To the turret profile, it looks like any dust and dirt will get trapped in a circular pattern that I will recreate. I will start adding more pigments to the previous work. While the thinner dries, I will make some dust with oils, so you can see another way to make dusty surfaces. Oils allow for exceptionally fine control, so I like to use them in precision applications, in this case for a streaked dirt with vertical blending. With a brush moist with enamel thinner I proceed to make circular patterns, I use the turret as a guide for these circles. I don't know the name of this type of brush, but it's very useful for streaking grime and this kind of works. Don't forget to add weathering to nooks and crannies even if they are very hard to see from any angle. Like for example, behind and under the exhaust and tools in this case.
Let's go back to work in the ring once it's dried. Check with the turret and correct the previous work if needed. To warm up the fine markings, I use enamel dust effect and apply it again in a circular manner. The most important thing about weathering is lighting for the rich and realistic finish. I do some streaking on the hood while waiting. Now let's check the turret ring work so far. Pretty convincing, but it needs some more refinement. While I wait for the hole of weathering to dry more, I will start working on the turret. For the turret, I'm going to use a combination of two different tones of enamel dust effects, a lighter tone pigment added to the base one, and oil paint, same exact products that I used on the hole. I start by adding a mixture of the dust enamel effects to create a streaking dirt effect on the lower side of the turret. I paint the streaks randomly and keeping them low. In this case, it would be unreasonable for dust to accumulate in sur large quantities higher. Mud splashes, on the other hand, might be interesting to recreate. To create a streaking effect, I use this brush in an open down motion while blending it in. For the turret roof, I'm going to start applying a general light layer of dust with pigments, especially located in the back as the crew used to get in and out of the vehicle, I will imagine. I suggest not to apply heavy weathering on these hatches as the crew move around them and people don't usually step on them. I fix it with some drops of enamel thinner, but in this case, I want to do a better misty layer of dust, so I mix it a little bit with the brush. Then I sprinkle some more pigment to create some clumps of dirt. To blend it, I use a sponge slightly moistened in enamel thinner. This will create patches and break clumps randomly. Next, I dry brush it, then work it a bit more with a dry fine sponge. I try to leave some of the clumps for later. And now I do the first wet blending. I apply a striking effect only on this inclined surface on the back. With enamel dust effect, I proceed to create some accumulations around the commander's cupola. I use a fine sponge to give it a finer finish on some areas. I check the general progress of the whole build and see how it works all together. This is particularly important for a harmonious result. While the weathering work on the tank is drying, I proceed to finish the spare tracks. Here I will do a quite simple, easy to follow standard rusty finish. For this I will use a combination of acrylic paint in rust tones and pigments so you can see an alternative to the technique that we saw in part 2 for the mufflers. It's going to consist mainly of flicking paint, a bit of brush painting and some sponge chipping technique. It's going to be fun, fast and effective, guaranteed. I flick different tones of rose colors. And apply other tones with the sponge. In this case, I need to clean up some paint here, but if you want to further work on this with several shades and highlights, or whatever you want to do with it, grab a brush and work on it too. How much time you want to waste on doing these things is up to you. Now some dry pigments in raw stones. Some more sponge and flaking. Next, some brush details. There you 
conmigo, Art. Now we add a wash and some light shadows with enamel and let it dry. Let us check how the hull looks now that it has dried a bit more. And to refine the front, notice the same methods were applied to the headlights. The muffler area is next. As for the turret, sides are almost done and the top needs final layers. Once the spare tracks are dry, I'll drop them on the holder and blend them with the rest. First with some dry dust pigment. And finish with some pin washes with enamel dust effect. For the whole machine gun I painted it flat black and will rub some metallic pigment on it. I recommend getting one of these silicone chisels as sure they come in handy, but you can use your fingers and eraser too. The inside of the barrel gets the same treatment. To fix it in place I use enamel thinner and let capillary action do its thing. For the dirt generated from the exhaust, I will sprinkle some black pigment to simulate accumulations and spatters. For oil and fluid stains around the engine bay, I will use this too and apply it in several layers and near the maintenance hatches. I think this is the fuel cap, so I add full stains and around it and a bit of dripping. With enamel thinner we can blend it and play with the effects to create different intensities. Because we used pigments and enamel dust, the mixture is unbeatable in finish. I like to rub a bit of metallic pigment to edges that get contact constantly with the crew, like hatches, edges and some of the handles. Introducing the best product line to grace weathering in a long time. Not sponsored, but give me a call me. Basically, skill and laziness in a bottle, so I'm almost half if you want to spend any money in pre-made stuff. I will use it here to add all dried mud that hasn't fully fallen off. The homemade alternative is enamel paint for the color you want, pigment of similar colors and to add volume, and thinner. You can use Paris plaster instead, or with the pigments, or as a substitute, but it makes the final color way lighter. We blend the edges with enamel thinner and streak it down in the logical areas. I will use the old stains product to make the leaking on the road wheels. Try not to overuse this effect and be random in shape, but thoughtful in application. Here I was thinking this elongated and overweight tank will suffer on the first and last wheels more strain than usual. I will also do the second and last layer of oil to its stains on the engine. Let's do a final check. The turret roof on the sloped panel needs some work and some dried mud from the crew walking around. and the final result of this quick build.
first Japanese tank, but certainly not the last. Really fun to build. I had some modifications I wanted to do, but thought that they would be more interesting on a future Type 5 big boy tank that I have in the stash. In retrospective, I should have worked with some more volumetric weathering in the lower hull. Some little dry mod here and there would give it a more realistic finish. But I will add it perhaps if I finish its little base. But that's a story for another day. So, what is coming next and why you should subscribe, you ask? Well, here you can see the Panzer Jagger for Lang that I just did before this one. I will go back to January of this year once I finish in editing. I will show you how to do all these wet snowy mod. I have not been able to buy yet two things that I need to add, but the base project is finished and I'm quite happy with it as it is, as it's the first mod that I finished it in more than a year of low energy hobby work. And what's on the bench right now? The biggest one is the Dragon Shard Horse, my second ever ship, but what the hell, it's quite fun. Way more than tanks for me nowadays. This will be a slower build as I don't have space neither for working on it or display it, so I need to adapt on the go. Finally, the main dish, a kit that I was after for a long time and finally managed to get for a very reasonable price. This Nautilus is coming up next on my list of priorities and will be up in the channel soon. I will lavishly build it and try to make justice to the concept in my head. Let us see how it goes. Thank you so much for watching and if you made it this far, please subscribe and also check my Instagram to see more updates and content coming up.